Hello, viewers. Welcome to the Big Tega Podcast. And it's indeed a beautiful day here again. And I'm here live with the one and only DJ Nani. Music artist, producer, entrepreneur, actor, name it, is belonging in the entertainment space. And when you talk of DJ Nani, is this DJ who is being known all over Atlanta and all over the U.S., now is an international DJ. Please put it up for DJ Nani. Hello, hi Tega. How are hello, you doing? My hello, hello Nani. How you doing? How you I'm doing? I'm okay. Thank are you for you having okay? me here. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, good. we're hanging in there. Good, good. Yes. Hope coming here wasn't stressful. Stressful no, for you. Anything for Tega. Was it smooth ride, right? Anything for Tega. How have you been? I've been okay. What have you been up to lately? Just work. Okay. Work and navigating life. That's, that's, that's about it. That's the last time I checked up on you, you were in uh you were out of the country. What was that again? I was in Switzerland. Wow. Oh, you are now minister of tourism. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got the carry on the go. <laughs> Touring but, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good. It's good to experience the world. Yeah, for real. It's very, very important. No. Yeah. For real. But let's dive into it into this matter <clears throat> who is DJ Nani wow <laughs> wow I don't know the answer to that question yet I mean just tell me about yourself I don't know the answer to that question yet I can't tell you who DJ Nani is because DJ Nani don't know who DJ Nani is as I've been told and I will explain I was told that DJ Nani don't look at himself the way people on the outside look at himself. Mm. Which means I obviously I don't know who DJ Nani is. Wow. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me break it down, right? When I speak to people and ask them how do they view me, their views of who I am doesn't match the views of who or however I look at myself. I like that. I like, I like the controversy. <laughs> yeah. So they feel like I'm this, you know, big DJ, mm. established, doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, people look up to me. But when I look at myself, I haven't even reached, I haven't even scratched where I want to be. Yeah. That's why I can't answer that question, if you know what I mean. But I can introduce myself. Mm -hmm. The way I view myself. Yeah, go ahead. And the way I view myself. Hi, guys. This is DJ Nani. An upcoming DJ. You know. <laughs> upcoming DJ. <laughs> upcoming. Okay. <laughs> but we, 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 all know that you're, we all know that you're bigger than that. World acclaimed DJ Nani. Yeah, but that's not the goal. Mm. So what is the goal? The goal, the goal is to be... The goal is to reach heights when it comes to DJing or like just being in an entertainment industry that mm -hmm. nobody have you know reached before. Mm -hmm. And God has put us in the right part to get there. So we literally have to do the you know the groundwork and the actual work to get there. And that's what I'm doing right now. So all that all that fame and glory, I'm not ready for that yet. Mm. I'm not ready to step into that into that yet because mm. I feel like I'm not where I need to be. Well, it, it's been it's been heated topic on this podcast mm -hmm. talking about fame and money. Mm -hmm. I do ask people, fame and money. Which one do you prefer? Fame and money. Fame versus money. Money. Mm. Everybody says money. <laughs> fame will not pay my bills. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fame will not take care of my family. Yeah. But money sure will. Mm -hmm. So definitely yeah. money. Yeah. What would you pick? Of course, money. Yes, come Fortune. on. Now. That's the most important thing. Fortune. But the goal oh. is to be the most paid, yeah. not the most known. Yes, not the, the most known. The most paid. The most paid. Yes. Yes. Because truly, money can give you fame. Yes. You can buy fame with money. Yes. You know, but you can't buy money with fame. You can buy, yeah. Can you buy money with fame? You yes, you can. You can buy money with if fame? If you are famous, mm. you can utilize that to make money. Okay, that's uh, that makes sense. Yeah, you can utilize fame to make money, money. if you're smart. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I feel like 
being famous, it's, it could be a good thing and also a bad thing at the same time because there you can't walk in the streets. You can't go to the mall. Mm -hmm. You can't do what normal people do. Yeah. And that's scary. Yeah. It changes your life, your family's life. So I just just give me the money, keep the fame. Yeah. I'm okay. Okay. A lot of people know you as a DJ, but not too many people know you as a music artist. How did this all start? Um, being a, oh, I would say when it comes to like the DJing part of like my career, mm -hmm. I'm okay. I've done everything I need to do as a DJ. Mm -hmm. I've DJed concerts, mm -hmm. festivals. So it's that question, like, what's next? Get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And obviously, we're in, a, we're in this part where African music is, like, blowing, is going global. Yeah. And us that is on this part of the world, we got to contribute to that global success. Mm -hmm. And that starts from us reaching out. I, I mean, the DJs, I don't know how to sing, but I know I'm in a position to help a lot of the artists that is on this side of the world mm -hmm. to reach the goal that they are targeting you know that would mean me collab collaborating with them doing songs with them mm -hmm. sometimes i use my own funds to shoot video just out of you know the goodness of my heart to make yeah. sure that they get to where they're trying to get to because mm -hmm. if they succeed i succeed yeah. you know what i mean so that's that's the goal behind me doing music yeah. Okay, DJ Nani is your brand name, right? Yes. What is your full name? My full name is Beneth. A lot of people don't know that. Beneth, I'm not going to give you my last name. <laughs> but my, my, my name is Beneth. So how did you come about that name, Nani? Okay, um, you know, obviously gr growing up in Nigeria, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up around my peers. We played soccer football mm -hmm. and um i'm a manchester united fan mm. and i used to be a nanny we 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 go turn enemy from from here now. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a nanny that played for okay. manchester united unfortunately my, my my team is always losing to us yes to arsenal <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm an arsenal fan and that's quite unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, the name came from football. Um, when I was young, playing soccer, football, they used to call me Nani. Mm. And I kind of, when I was picking the name for my DJing, that was the name that just kept ringing in my head, Nani, Nani. Mm. And I picked it. Yeah. But now the name Nani took over my name. Nobody really knows my real name now. Yeah. Everybody calls me Nani, mm. which is a good thing. Yeah. So how did you start... Uh, when did you start DJing and has it been coming for, for you? I started 2013. I came to America 2011. Before I came, I didn't even know what a DJ was, you know, but I started DJing tw 2013. And it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience, you know. At first, it was big, a lot of doubts. Like, is this going to work? It's, it's, <laughs> it was yeah. a lot of doubts. It was like pressure from my parents, mm -hmm. you know, my siblings. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. But I'm the type of person, like, if I put my mind into something, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And I just knew from the get go, like, if I, if I keep doing this, because I'm really good at it. Yeah. <clears throat> like, extremely good at it. Yes. So. I mean, <laughs> in, in the whole of Atlanta, there's no DJ you want to call. The first five DJs mm -hmm. in Atlanta, mm -hmm. DJ Nani is on that list. And everybody believes DJ Nani is the number one DJ in Atlanta. Now, DJ Nani has actually moved from Atlanta to be recognized in the whole of the U.S. Mm -hmm. and internationally. You know, that's... that's. I'm not the number very, one DJ in Atlanta. That's very amazing. I'm not the number one You're not DJ. the one, number no. one, so I'm just hyping you now. Yeah, I feel like... All You're of trying that, to be humble, right? It's not about being humble. Mm. I just got here. Mm. I haven't scratched the surface in Atlanta yet. Yes, I'm most likely the most booked. Yeah. Or the highest paid, which do is you? the goal. But there's a lot of things that I intend to do for me to claim that number one role. If yes. You know what I mean? But the thing is that I've noticed because I do go out. Yeah. When, when you see this flyer out there that DJ Nani will be playing at this particular club or lounge tonight, the place will be packed up. Yeah. 
Is there something you do to make that? There's, there's a way you <laughs> tell us more about that. Thing. How do you do it? We all know certain, certain lounges, certain parties that may not be filled up. Yeah. But once people know the Jenani is coming there, the place will be filled up. I think my name is very marketable. The brand is very marketable, you know. Because let's be honest, even you, if before you go to any party, mm. subconsciously you have you look on the fly, let me see who is DJing. Mm. If you see certain name, no doubt, okay, I'm going because you know you will have fun. Yeah. So that's the case here. When people see my name on the flyer, you know, they make sure they go because they know it's guaranteed a good time. Mm. You know. Yeah. So that I think that's the reason. But you know, I do my own my own little promotion too. Yes. You know, I have my own events every Friday. Mm-hmm. At Faji and mm-hmm. every Sundays. Afaji. It's a new club. It just opened. Mm-hmm. And it's popping like it's crazy. spreading like wildfire. It just opened January yes. and it's been amazing. It's yes. been a big success for them. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Thank God. So where are the places apart from parties? What are the kind of gigs that you have performed at? <laughs> I've done everything. Burials, um, wake keepings, weddings, baby showers. I've done it all. But right now, I kind of slowed down on on those gigs because I feel like I don't have enough time for them. You know, mm. I'm always gone. I'm never. Let's let's home. look at the big ones like music concerts. Oh, the big, <laughs> the biggest concert i've been to or i've played at would be in india india and big I shout out I, to ck okay you know we kind of like linked up he made me his official dj which i'm most definitely thankful for because i've changed a lot and now we've been touring together mm-hmm. hitting stages together doing amazing shows so shout out to ck mm-hmm. my guy <laughs> CK is an amazing guy. Amazing individual. Yeah. Yeah. Though I've not met him one on one, but I admire I, I admire him from afar. Yeah. It's not easy to meet him. Yeah. <laughs> He's an amazing guy. It's not easy to meet him. He's a global star. Yeah. You is. know. Yeah. So that that's what I was saying. You're an international DJ for somebody to DJ for CK, who is an amazing international star. Then you are an international star as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what what made you now go into music? Talk about the transition from DJing to being a musical artist. I know you released like three singles already? No, I have like about five. Five singles? Okay. Yeah. Um like I said it was it's always that question in my head. You know like uh, when people come to me and they be like, "Oh, Nani, I want to be a DJ, I want to do music." I always ask them, "How bad do you want it?" Mm-hmm. You know? When it comes to DJing, I feel like, like I said, I've done everything I need to do, mm-hmm. like just playing music. Yes, I've DJed all the big events that I can imagine. You feel me? Yeah. But it's always that one question: What's next? Yes. Yes, I'm doing music now, but now, guess what? I have that question in my head: What's next? Because mm-hmm. I'm an entertainer. It's when it comes to entertainment, it's not just DJing. It doesn't mm-hmm. stop there. It's not just making music. It doesn't stop there. It's not just doing my own events. It doesn't stop there. I'm here. I'm talking to you. Tega, I want to shoot a movie with you. You yes. feel me? Mm-hmm. That's a mindset that yeah. you got to have to actually get to where you need to be at. Mm-hmm. If you if you perfect doing one thing, it doesn't stop there. What's yes. next? Mm-hmm. What's next? And obviously, another part about me doing music is just like my love for music. I want to be able to be in the club, to play my own records. I want to be able to put out my own music and people actually love it. Yeah. You know. So that's 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 the reason why we are doing it. Okay. Your career journey. Mhm. What are the ups and downs Ooh. that you have encountered? Ups and downs. I would say trying to balance my personal life and my career just trying to find a nice balance between both you know there's us being DJs we have this big thing where everybody think DJs are 
showers. <laughs> We're going to talk about that shortly. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me sip to my shy. You know? <laughs> We're going to talk about that shortly. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So obviously the ups and downs would be just being able to navigate that and then meeting people that mm -hmm. genuinely see you for who you are mm -hmm. other than just this person that just out here acting crazy. Mm -hmm. Don't really know what they're doing with their life. Yeah. Mm say that's the, that will be the ups and downs yeah yeah talking about djs being like it's a womanizer i said a shower mm -hmm. <laughs> you know do you do you think that's true or you want to debunk that there's some type of truth to it but it's not our fault mm. <laughs> it's really not our fault how do you mean um i would say that we're there to do a job and our, our job obviously comes with women being around, alcohol being around, and which which is which is fine, you know. Is there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But you as a person, what do you do with that exactly. when you are being put in those positions? Mm -hmm. If you know I me, mean? yeah. and people don't really tend to look at what DJs do. They just see the women being around, mm. alcohol being around. Yeah. And they just think, yeah, yeah, DJ is a DJ, is around women, he's this, this, that, and the third. Mm. But they don't tend to look at the person mm. who they really are. What do they do when they're around those people? Because it's like you see me in the club. If there's 20 women around me, there's no way I'm sleeping with those 20 women. Like, yeah. Uh -uh, come on now, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But it's just women like to be around us. Yeah. We can't pursue them. Why, why do you think women like to be around you guys? Because they, they tend to gain a lot. Like what? If you if you always around the DJs, the ballers will be around the DJs. The ballers fuck with the DJs. Mm -hmm. The people that are buying the bottles, they be with the DJs. So obviously, you're there to enjoy yourself. No wrong with it. Yeah. Shout out to the women that be around the DJs. <laughs> Don't stop being around <laughs> the DJs. Yeah. What is one regrettable moment you hmm. had of being a DJ? Or well, let me just say your, your career. None really. I don't I don't think I have any regrettable moments. Not really. Mm, I don't I, I don't have any cuz I believe I'm I'm really doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, it's a, it's a blessing from God and even if I do anything that doesn't f you know align with what I'm trying to do, mm. I learn from it and I move on. I don't kind of I don't regret things. Have you had any embarrassing moments? Yes. Once upon a time, I was DJing. A girl bit me in the face. Ooh. Yeah, this was like a couple of years ago. She tried to request a song, and I wasn't trying to listen to her. She kind of like took a chunk of my face. What do you, what do you think caused that? Alcohol. Oh. <laughs> Alcohol. You know, when people, oh. when people are lit, they mm. feel like they have all the power in the world, so... Yeah, so that was a, that was very embarrassing. So how did you handle that? Did you report her to the police or? No, I just you just let her go. What can I do? She's a woman. Wow. So, fortunately, that was, was nice okay. of you, though. Some people would definitely call the cops. Not me. Some people call the police and report that. That's like, that is violent. That's an assault. That was an assault. Yeah. yeah. We, we get assaulted all the time. Being a DJ, mm. we get assaulted all the time. But it's okay. It comes with the job. Mm. That doesn't mean go around and assault DJs. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Even in this Atlanta self, mm -hmm. like there was one time a guy spilled a drink on me because oh, I refused wow. to play Bonner Boy. Literally, oh. I we go DJs actually go through a lot. Yeah, it's not an easy job. But it's no. Sometimes I think this the emotions of people when they like I said when people are lit. Yes, they. Feel like they have all the power in the world mm -hmm. but after years of being in the industry you will now have to like navigate things like that just mm -hmm. yeah guess what the same guy tried to book me to dj <laughs> feel me like yeah. there's stuff like that you just you know you let it go yeah. we move where do you want to take your career to, to the next level i don't know how to answer that question but i would say that I'm in the right part of wherever I want to take my career to. 
I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, like how people be like, oh, there's there's limit to where I'm trying to get to. There's no mm -hmm. limit to where I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. I just want to be healthy, do what God blessed me to do, and just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, as long as I can. Yeah. I make sure I can feed everybody around me, my family, my friends. Make sure everybody's okay. When I look back and be like, wow, this person is okay, this person is doing good, that's when I'll be like, yeah, I think I'm okay. Okay. Now, you, you are someone who is actually renowned and known for your good work, your craft. Yeah. And you have also listened to other DJs, DJing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is missing? With other DJs? Yes. Um... I'll give the other DJs an advice. Nothing is missing, but when it comes to when it comes to DJing, right? Unfortunately, there is a DJ and then there is the DJ. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There is superstar DJs. Then there is people that God just blessed them to be a DJ. Not everybody have that it, yes. which is okay. Mm -hmm. I can have a bad day DJing and people will still have the best time of their life. Mm -hmm. There's DJs that will come, have the best nights of, like their best nights of DJing, mm -hmm. people still wouldn't have fun. Yes. You know what I mean? It's, there's really not any way to get away from that. You just got to learn your place and know that, okay, this is my strength. I'm perfected. You know what I mean? Mm. That's really what it is. Okay. What do you do when you are not like working? I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping. Listen, I barely sleep. I need more sleep. Right now, I'm even sleepy. <laughs> I'm sleeping or I'm playing video games or watching movies or, you know, I like to, it's a lot of things I would like to do on my downtown, but I don't have the time to do it. Mm. It's like I don't have time for myself. I know. You're always I, traveling. You're everywhere. Have, I don't have time for myself, bro. You know what I mean? So the times that I have, I try to sleep. I try to sleep. Mm -hmm. So many times my you know, my mom she'll call me like, Have you slept? Mm -hmm. Lay down, sleep. You're working hard. So But that's how bad I want it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Boys down to how bad I want it. Yeah. Going back to the beginning, because this is a question I would have asked you earlier on. Mm -hmm. You say you because you said you don't want to mention your last name. That's why I didn't ask that question. But I just feel I should ask it again. Your last name sounds like you're from a certain part of Nigeria. I'm Igbo. You're Igbo. What part of Igbo? Anambra State. Anambra. Okay. It sounds like a Delta name. Anambra. You don't want to mention it. You don't want people to know that. It's, <laughs> it's okay. okay. No, my last name is AK. I'll spell it for you guys. They should go and learn how to pronounce it. Just learn how to pronounce it. <laughs> A K P U D O. It's very hard. Mm. So then I know how to pronounce it. <laughs> You're not gonna pronounce it for them. No. That's homework. Yes. Assignment. <laughs> when they see me walk up to me and pronounce it, I'll know you listen to this interview. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are already famous. Yeah, already. The fame chose me. <laughs> yeah, fame chose you. How do you handle fame? Oof. Sometimes. Sometimes. Is is a good thing when you're in a good mood, but when you're in a bad mood, you, I promise you, you don't want to be you don't want to be famous. Mm. Like if you're famous and you're having a bad day, you don't want to be famous because if let's say you are out, everybody that walks in that know you, whether you're having a good day, bad day, you are forced to smile to them, shake their hand. That's true. You know, so <laughs> sometimes that's not a good experience. You know, I would personally say. Also, it's just. When it comes to like friendship, being famous, you don't know people's intention being your friend. Mm. When people are in your life in your life, you don't know what their true intentions are. Yes. They might be there for the wrong reasons because you are famous, mm. not because they actually, you know, like you as a person. Mm. So sometimes it sucks, you know, trying to pick or choose who the who the real friends are. Mm -hmm. I would say you won't really know who your friends are till you're going through tough times. You know, having somebody to lean on when you're going through tough times and when you're going through, like, the good times, 
that's who that's what a friend are like mm-hmm. no that's who why your real friends it's not a lot of people yeah that you even you you know you so many people that you see outside they show you mad love but yeah. when, if you are going through if you are going through something you know not to call them yes and it makes you question are those people really my friends you feel I me mean? yeah. so and um, i have like about five friends no matter how big i get mm-hmm. i know who those five people are yes because i've been in situations where i've called them and they've showed up for me and those people will always show up for them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i know a lot of people that pretend like if they ask them oh yeah nani's manga i'm nani's mm-hmm. friend do i feel the same way no obviously after years of being in the industry i know how to navigate and deal with them yeah. Some people think once they know you, you are automatically yes. friends. Yes, the friendship is way more. I than don't that. use the word, I don't use yeah. the word friendship. Yeah. Easily, right? yeah. So those who want to claim you as friends and yet you know they are not your friends, how do you set boundaries? I don't. You don't. I don't. Oh, so how do you do it? I let them think they are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your guy. I be. We are guys. Yeah. It's okay, boy. Deep down in my heart, me, you, I know, you know who my friends are. You feel me? Come on now. Mm. If they want to be pretending that they are my friend, mm. sure, by all means. Mm-hmm. You're my friend. You're my guy. I'll show you my love. Yeah. But do I feel the same way? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Looking around today, mm-hmm. the situation of life mm-hmm. here in Atlanta that we are, a lot of people are struggling with depression. Mm. Yeah. It's what, a deep topic. Yeah. What do you think... What is your take on taking care of your health, your mental health, for you not to fall into depression? Because a lot of people have gone because of depression. Yeah, that's a very deep question. Yes. So what would you say to people on how to manage your mental health? I feel like there's a lot of people out here that are dealing with depression or struggling with their mental health but they don't even know that they are struggling with their mental health mm-hmm. you know <sighs> this topic is a, is a very serious topic yes it is it's a very serious topic i try to ask if i feel the need to ask my guest on the show i do ask you know but Yeah, it's a very serious topic. Very serious I want to topic. actually dedicate a topic to that. Like you let's should. just talk about mental health. How to navigate it, how to be better, how to do well, it. If you're African and you grew up in Africa, mental health is automatically not okay. <laughs> what, what, Am I lying? Why why did you say that? Just your, your environment growing up, mm. you know, that alone with like your mental health from childhood like you 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 have a lot of childhood traumas that you don't even know that exist yes. just from growing up in Africa mm-hmm. like your parents in your fam- your other members of your family how they treat you mm-hmm. and you wouldn't know yes I feel like in the African community so many people need therapy yes I need therapy you need therapy everybody you know need therapy everybody does but we all therapy. ignore it yes. we all keep pushing you feel know I me mean? mm-hmm. which is not a good thing but definitely So if if you want to if you want to compare it well should I say should I not use the word comparison but if you want to look at the American society mm-hmm. and the African society mm-hmm. where do you think yeah where do you think has more issues with mental health african why did you say that well, do you know how many do you know how many people in africa that get abused every day Yeah, they have like things put in place that can protect the child mm-hmm. from being it could be like sexually abused, mm-hmm. which it still happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but in Africa, who can they call? Mm. Just think about it. It could be their uncle raping them. It could be their cousin. Who are they going to call? The police? Who are they going to report to? Just from experience, just growing up there, I know firsthand that and they can't even mm talk about it mm. they can't even let anybody know mm. but you know i just urge everybody to seek help mm. you know talk to somebody you know always help 
to to speak about it. It you don't it doesn't have to be a therapist to say, but like it could be a friend. Just find somebody that you can confide in, talk to them, let them know what you're really going through. Because no matter what you're going through, there's somebody going through worse. Yes, it's not worth it to lose it all to that. You know, there's somebody going through worse. Mm. I always try to remember that myself. You know, this year I've seen Shiggy, <laughs> Shiggy mm. Pro Max. Mm. But, you know, I always remember that somebody somewhere yeah. dealing with worse, yes. you know. Mm-hmm. That's how, I mean, that's how I deal with it. I don't know what to say. Yeah, but the truth is that a lot of us are going through a mental health issue. Yeah. A lot of people are traumatized. Yeah. But we don't even know it. But if I begin to unpack yeah. my own, Jesus. Yeah. But I just know, just being aware that it's there is enough. Mm-hmm. You know, but what I think is that no matter what you're going through, you know, transferring it to someone and use, use it to punish somebody else, that is a sick part of it. That yeah. I don't think it should be, you know, because a lot of people are traumatized, but they seek help and they are better. But some are traumatized, but they don't want to seek help. They don't want help. Mm-hmm. Because they just want to be the devil's advocate. They just want to be a representative of the devil. Let me never use that word so that it doesn't look too hard on people. <laughs> I won't say know? I won't say people th- just like to hurt other people. No, that's not the case. It's like the, it, when you when you meet a, somebody that's addicted to drugs, right? They know they're addicted to drugs, but they can't help themselves. Some people can't help themselves. Some people need somebody to come in their life and help them. Some people cannot be helped. Some everybody can be helped. Really, you think so? Yes, everybody can be helped. Some people are so deep into this. Like, if you want to help that them, you mean, you'll be dragged into that deep. No, that doesn't mean don't help them. Yeah, the the fight might be hard to be. You know, the battle might be hard, but guess what? It can be fought. You know, no matter how crazy, how deep. The person acts, they can still be helped. Mm-hmm. I just, I mean, I'm a firm believer of like people being helped. You know, I meet, I meet people, I meet girls. They be like, oh, when they're dealing with a guy, the guy is like so closed off. You know, the guy don't know, don't even know like they are dealing with like mental health. I be like, okay, what did you do to help the guy? Obviously, he saw someone that clearly needs help. Mm-hmm. What did they do? They walk away. If you know I me, mean? and then they go tell people, "Oh, that guy is crazy." Da, da, da. The guy clearly needs help. It could be a female. You meet a female that you don't know what I've been through, bro. Like people really go through things. People really go through things. That doesn't mean because they went through it and they act a certain way that they are not a human being. You still see them as a human being. Mm-hmm. Find a way to help them. Mm-hmm. That's just how I am as a person. What's your proudest accomplishment? My proudest accomplishment would be just making my mom proud. Because when I started, she was she was doubting me. Mm. She's like, ah, I don't know. He's your DJ. I don't know. This guy to be a doctor, a nurse, something. Guess what? Now she when she see me, my son, you know, she's she's very proud of me. So I think mm. that. That alone is like the most, the most thing I would say. Like I'm really proud of myself. Just making her proud every single day. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I, I go as hard as I go because I just know I can't fail. I can't. I can't. I can't look at my mother and she she's disappointed in me. Nah, I don't. I never want to see that. Mm. Yeah. Do you think people still date today? Date? Yeah, dating. <laughs> People still date, but not in Atlanta. Not in Atlanta. <laughs> not here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. People still date, but not in Atlanta. I don't know what they do in Atlanta. What you don't know? I have no. I have no idea what you guys do here, but it's not dating. You guys are doing something else. We need to find a word. You think it's difficult to find a partner in Atlanta? Yes. It's one man to five women. 
You don't think so? I thought you would even say more than that. That was I was like, oh. like you want to use the one man, ten women. From what I've seen, yeah, it's obviously the distraction is here. From what I've seen, me personally, everybody, everybody they knock. Everybody <laughs> Just knocks everybody. <laughs> everybody they knock. <laughs> But it's okay. It's all right. I I just pray everybody, you know, make sure you take care of yourself. Yes. Just make sure you take care of yourself. That's all I can say. Mm. What's the craziest thing you have been through? No, we're just having a conversation at this mm. point. The craziest thing I've ever been through is being genuine. Yeah. To somebody, but some that person is not seeing your genuineness. Yeah. It can Maybe be they just chose not to. You know, it's when somebody doesn't see how genuine you are, mm -hmm. it's it actually sucks. What does that do to you as a person? It can make you depressed if you're not strong. Yeah. It can make you depressed. It can make you <laughs> doubt yourself who you really are. Does it change you as a person? It doesn't change me. So you just have a lot of love to give. Yes, I do. Me as a person, I've seen worlds, I've seen a lot of things in life. But I don't let those things determine yeah, who, you are. who I am. I'm still the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm even better when I come off when I come out from certain situations, certain bad situations. I I even become better yeah. because what I experience, I don't it. want somebody else to experience it. Yeah. It makes me even give more. The world today is not the way I used to know it when I was growing up as a child. Growing up as a child, people. People were kind. People were loving. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Nowadays it's conditional people love. People were helpful. People would do things for you without seeking reward because they just want to help you. They just want to see you grow. They just want to see you achieve what you... Do you feel like love these days is just... is a lot of condition to love this. Yes. Days. Someone once told me that marriage is economical. It's transactional. You bring this, I bring this. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't disagree to that. I agree. I believe Absolutely. too. I believe too. You know, believe too. they said marriage is you got you get married because you want to achieve something from somebody. But I don't really think so because from the Christian part of point of view that I am, I'm a Christian. I believe first of all, marriage is companionship for two people to come together to lift. It's not even because to have children. That's the mistake a lot of people make. Marriage is made because of companionship, mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm then that friendship of love that exudes, that make you want to procreate. The people these days come with wrong reasons. You see girls these days just want to be pregnant for you so that they can begin to take college child support. Mm -hmm. You know, people are no, you don't add value to yourself. Mm -hmm. How can you add value to a relationship? Mm -hmm. But first of all, once you have, once you are a high value person, a person of value, you are not even seeking those. You are looking for a way to add value to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Not trying to rip off somebody else. Trying to see what you can get from somebody. Yeah. Because these things are natural. It's just a natural law. If you come in with love, you're definitely going to receive love. Not definitely. Well, you can come in with the purest intention and still get like you somebody know, will literally stomp on your nature, heart. Nature abhors a vacuum. People who are mentally not okay, they don't appreciate anything you give to them. They will not appreciate love. They will not even appreciate the money you give to them. They will not appreciate the child that you have together. They will not appreciate the roof over their head that you provide. I think it's only people who are mentally not okay. Because if you are, if might, you are it, normal, you might have nothing. That's, it might have something. If you are, if you are normal, you will definitely be appreciative. Who's your celebrity crush? <laughs> Rihanna don't go to love. <laughs> <Till> love. <laughs> Change your crush. <laughs> you don't go. No, I don't. I'm still crushing over. I don't know. I never had any crushes before. Mm. You know, maybe I have somebody that I wanted to talk to, but like, you know, I don't. You 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 I'm might a, not I'm even meet. Person. You might not even meet that person for the rest of your life. For me, I'm a very practical person. Mm. Like, I'm a Virgo, and Virgos are very practical. Mm -hmm. so it wouldn't make sense to a Virgo to have crush on somebody that they don't they will never meet be with that's just how we are if you mean like i've never had any crush on anybody mm. celebrity no celebrity mm. yeah. 
you fall in love. Have you ever fall, fallen in love? Yes. Are you still in love? I don't know. What's your love language? Um, act of service, physical, you know, touch, um, quality time. Those three are my top three. I'm not the problem. <laughs> I don't have to do anything better. I do everything I need to do as a man. You love what you're doing right now. I, I'm in a I'm, shh, Tega, I'm happy. When it comes to my life right now, I'm happy. The only thing missing is I'm in a point where I'm ready to settle down. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm trying to get married, have kids. I'm ready for children. Like, I'm so ready. That is beautiful. Feel me? Like, you know, a lot of men don't actually know when they are ready. Me, I know that I'm ready because mm -hmm. I've, enjoy, I've, well, of course, I've enjoyed life. I think a man is ready when he sees that woman. Yeah. Or when he wants to see that woman. Or when <laughs> yeah. Whatever I'm doing now is okay. If I need more. I need more. I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what my life will be like next year. The way Afrobeat is growing, unfortunately, I'm an Af African man, Afrobeat DJ, as I identify. The way Afrobeat is growing, I don't know what life will be like next year. Mm -hmm. The way it is, I didn't know, like this year, I didn't know I would go to India to DJ. I didn't know I would go to Switzerland to DJ. Yeah. You feel me? And when you go places like that, you meet people, you network. So I'm about to be in Europe mm -hmm. on tour for a whole month. That can change the course of my life. You get know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the plan is just to make sure I'm in the right right room when the decisions are being made. Yeah. But you got to plan because even though you don't know what you want to do right now, you still have to plan. Because it says, there's a saying that says... In my says, personal life, I plan. Yeah. You know, that's that, that saying that says if you fail to plan, you, you plan to fail. So when you always have a goal, once you always have a plan, once the right time comes, you definitely execute it. Once you plan, an opportunity meets that plan, it will definitely result to success. The plan has always been to, you know, be an international DJ. That was the plan, right? Mm. We are there now. Okay. Congratulations. The next plan <laughs> is to win a Grammy. Exactly. So that's a plan, right? So one day, see me, Nani. Mm -hmm. look, 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 zoom in. See me, mm -hmm. I win a Grammy one day. Okay. And then I'll tell you what my next plan is. I'll refer to this video, to this yes. podcast, that you said it. I said it. See, me, Nani, Bennett, mm. A-K-P-U-D-O. <laughs> <laughs> I will win a Grammy one day. Yeah. I will refer to this podcast. When, when you said it, God this, has put us this in, podcast was God has, God has put, up, put, put us in the right position mm -hmm. to make sure that that happens. So it's, it's just left for me to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I ask you? question just yes. one yeah, i like to sneak in questions yeah, when you hear the name nani mm. or when you see me because i remember when you first met me yeah. as, a, as a mr soul somebody introduced you to me yeah omalicha yeah i think so so since then you've known me mm -hmm. when you see me yes you see, hear the name nani mm -hmm. what do you think what comes to mind mm -hmm. i see nani as um, a good bad boy uh. <laughs> <laughs> that answer shock you. It shocked me. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's focus on the good parts. <laughs> yeah, a good bad boy. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. It's good to have all mixes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't say you are ugly. I didn't add ugly. Good, bad, and ugly. But I say good bad boy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a bad boy. A bad boy. <laughs> You're yeah, a very bad boy. <laughs> that's that's how I see. Did I? Did I? Uh, am I right? <laughs> no, you are not right. I'm not right. <laughs> I'm a nanny. Is just a good guy. Mm. Nanny is misunderstood. Mm. Tell me about that misunderstanding. What uh, What do you think people misunderstand about you? That I'm a bad boy. <laughs> I'm not a bad boy. <laughs> I'm a good guy. <laughs> Nani I, just, I think I think you are a good guy, listen, but yeah. I also think you are a bad. Boy. Anybody that really know me knows that <laughs> Nani is a good guy. Mm. I have like the purest of intentions when it comes to the way I deal with people. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. A good guy, and then I work hard. Mm -hmm. 
hard worker. No, honestly, I think I think you're a good person. Every time you see me, what am I doing? But I also think you. Are, anytime I see you, you're always working. You're always yeah, dude, that's all I do. Being busy. Yeah. Yeah. I think you are a good person, but I also think you are a bad boy. Bad boy in the sense that <laughs> you're <a> bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> not not bad negatively. Yeah, I know. I know what you, you mean. Know, yeah. A good bad boy. That's yeah. how we say it now. When someone say good bad boy, it's it's a compliment. It's not like something really bad. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. But on the most part, I think you are a good person. I think you have a good heart. Yeah. yeah. I try. Try my best. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what what else would you like to say that I've not said? Something you like to mention that I've not mentioned before we call it a wrap? Um I'd like to say in everything you guys do, if you're watching this video, pay attention. In everything you do in this life, put God first. Put God first. No matter whatever you're going through in life, let God know you're going through it. Just put God first. That's all I can say. Absolutely. God is the ultimate. Yeah. Almighty. Yeah, the almighty, the beginning. And the, the end, end of this interview. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you so much. DJ that guy. Oh my God. I'm very happy you are here. Definitely, bro. Yes. He's paying me. I was being supposed to shoot this guy. Yeah. He won't tell you guys. I messed up. I traveled. And I'm here to sincerely oh, apologize. You, you, you didn't mess Tega, up. you're my OG. You didn't mess up. You just that you got uh, a lot of things going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't know, meet up with. But we're here now. But now you're here, and we've, yeah. we've done it. Yeah. You know, I really appreciate you being here. It means a lot to me. Thanks for coming. Definitely, bro. Appreciate, I appreciate it. you. Definitely. Okay. Hello, viewers. Thank you for watching this episode with the Janani. It's been a very informative um, uh, interview, entertaining. An inspiring one at, at that. So until next time, I want you to keep subscribing to the Big Tegas podcast and remain blessed. Peace. <laughs>